Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. You get a bigger crowd when you don't tell them what you're announcing. <laughs> good to remember, good to remember. So thank you for being here. Great day to be a mountaineer. Great day for WD Medicine and for all the things we're doing here at the university. So, you know, we have an excellent group of physicians, clinicians, and leaders here, many of whom are in the room today, and I thank you for being here. You know, when I came here about four years ago, previously I worked with two large healthcare organizations. I worked with a large healthcare organization in Columbus, Ohio, and one in Pittsburgh. Excellent organizations. And I think we're an equally excellent organization. But when I compare where I've been in my past to this organization, you know, I think our ceiling here and the impact we can have on the people of the state, the economic impact, the job creation impact, the care impact we can have, the ceiling is higher here than those other organizations I was at. I really believe that. And I think today what we're doing here is we're here to take that ceiling and to move it up just a little bit more. Okay. So three years ago, along with the support of Dr. Gee, along with the support of my academic partner, Dr. Clay Marsh, and our physician leader from our chief medical officer, our physician practice plan leader, Judy Charlton, we made the decision to invest hundreds of millions of dollars into creating one of the top heart master institutes in the country. Okay? And we went out and we recruited Dr. Benet Badoir to lead that institute. And Dr. Badwar recruited countless numbers of great clinicians and physicians, including our chief of vascular surgery, Dr. Luke Marone, chief of cardiology, Dr. Partho Sengupta, our chief of thoracic surgery, Dr. Gulam Abbas. And the results we've seen in these last 24 to 36 months are nothing short of amazing, right? And so what we found is when we put people, programs, and the physical plan together, we can really do magical things here, right? And, and this is now one of the top, I'm going to say one of the top 10, 15 programs in the country, right? But there's one thing we have not done here. I mean, it is a comprehensive heart fashion institute, but we have 22 West Virginians today that are on the heart transplant list, right? So this organization over the last few months with the support of our board of directors and our medical staff at the Heart Master Institute, we submitted a certificate of need with the healthcare authority of the state of West Virginia to begin a heart transplant program in 2018. That's an announcement. Thank you. You're a little slow. You got it. <laughs> and so, you know, when you look at that football stadium across the street, they're trying to be a top 25 Division I college football program, right? We want to be a top 25 academic medical center. So I'm going to ask our leader and our president of the university and our chair of the hospital system, Dr. Gordon Dee, to come up and share some of his excitement. I'm going to tell you something. It's not by, it's not by coincidence that we built this hospital right next to our football stadium. Because if they play too damn a close game, they'll just haul everyone right over here, you know, to get, to get cardiac care, you know. So, um, uh, we're really honored today to have our governor with us and uh, to be able to announce this. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, um, as, as was said, we have just made tremendous strides over the last three or four years. And, and nothing short of miraculous. And, and with with Clay and, and obviously with Albert, we have done some wonderful things. But without hiring great uh, physician leaders like uh, Dr. Benet, we would not be there. And I've, and I've said to I've said to Dr. Badwar a number of times that um, you know he kind of opened the floodgates. When you hire someone really talented, then other talented, talented people come. And if you don't do that, then, then the talent doesn't rise. So this is this is a very special uh, a special moment for us because what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that people have the best possible health care in West Virginia. We should not have people going away to other places. I mean, have you ever been to Rochester, Minnesota? Horrible place. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is. I, who wants who else wants to go there? And then, uh, and then, uh, you know, obviously, obviously, um, if you think about going to the Cleveland Clinic, it's cold. The wind blows in off the, uh, the, 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 the. It's not very good. And then, and then, God forbid, UPMC, right? So there we go. <laughs> So anyway, anyway, we just decided we were going to make it our place, right? 
and we're going to have people come here. So, so there's no reason that people should not come to this beautiful state and get the best possible health care. And, and that is what we're <coughs> celebrating today. So I, 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 I want you to know, uh, all of you to know, that you've made something very special, very possible. I was in Van, West Virginia this morning. And uh, southern part of the state, small community in Boone County, um, but the people of this state depend on this university. We are in many ways the heart and soul of this state. Uh, the future of the state depends on an educated citizenry. It depends on us keeping our young people here. It depends on us providing health care so that people can stay here and people feel confident about that. And that is, that is precisely what we're doing. So the caliber of service is first rate. I know better than anyone. I, I have to tell this story very quickly, but I, I love to tell and that is the fact that I am getting off an airplane in, in Pittsburgh. I probably should not have done that, but I was getting off an airplane in Pittsburgh, and, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm walking up the jetway, and I fell flat on my face. I, mean, I just had, a, I, I just had, I was, I don't know what you say. I mean, I just did a face, a face plant. And so here I am, and, uh, and uh, fortunately there was an Ohio State guy there who had my name on his diploma. He came up, and he was helping me, and blood was flowing and everything. And, uh, but to show the power of this mountaineer spirit, um, what what happened is while I'm sitting there bleeding all over the damn place, uh, people going by said, "Going mountain, go mountaineers, go mountaineers." Go mountaineers. <laughs> Time out, just give me an infusion. Which is the way it and so and so finally, finally the. Uh, the the, the 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 ambulances came and they, they were working on me and they said, We need to take you to a hospital. And I said, Which hospital? They said, UPMC. I said, Hell will freeze over. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I came here, I got the best service. I have a defibrillator just like Coach Huggins. Mine is a uh, mine is a Cadillac version. <laughs> this is a Chevrolet version. And you know, you remember about a year ago he, he you know he did not came out and uh, and uh, and I've joked with him since then that given our weight differential, if if, if mine goes off, it'll knock me into the next town. <laughs> anyway, we are so grateful for all of you, for every one of you who uh, who uh, make such a difference in the lives of uh, our people, and who might make a difference in the lives of uh, of everyone that touches this place. Um, so, Dr. Badwar, today is a big celebration. We're going to uh, we're going to do something very special, but we're already doing things special. But as Albert says, we our our competition is ourselves. We'll be as good as we want to be. Our competition in West Virginia is not other places. You know, this comparative data, I don't, I don't really buy into it because if we have the will and courage to be great, we will be. And the guy who's going to make that happen is this guy right here. So I'm really proud of, of our governor. I'm proud of the friendship we share. I'm proud of the leadership he's provided. One of the most colorful men in America, and I love him here. Let's get there. Our governor, okay? I'm going to hold this. Huh? You didn't trust me with this, right? Okay. Well, I'm going to sit then. That's easy. First of all, let me, no, I'm not. Let me say this about Gordon Gay. He says, I'm the most colorful man. I mean, really and truly, he is unbelievable. And I love him with all my soul. The same with Clay, the same with all y'all. You know, I just think about all the greatness that this university is doing is unbelievable. But one thing I can't get Gordon off the bubble on, and I'm going to share this with the world right now, but, but Gordon told me a year ago, he said, I'm really thinking really hard about getting married. And I said, well, it's probably a good thing to be thinking about at your age, Gordon. But, <laughs> but, but I said, uh, and then someone who's a mutual friend came up with the idea, or maybe Gordon came up, I'm sorry, it was Gordon came up with the idea, he said, he said, what do you think about this idea? He said, I said, wait a minute, Governor. I want, I mean, I mean, wait a minute, Gordon. I want to be in a wedding. And he said, okay, fine. I said, I want to be the ring bearer. And he said, okay, good enough. And then he said, but I've thought about this. And you tell me just how great this would be if we could just get him and his beautiful bride right across the threshold here. 
He said, what if I were to get married at halftime of one of our games? And I thought, well, how could it be any better? But I said, now I don't want to be the ring bearer, Gordon. I want to get certified where I can do the wedding. <laughs> and so we're working on that. We've still got a ways to go, but, uh, but nevertheless, I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. What you're doing here, Gordon, Clay, all of you, all of you, is unbelievable. It's unbelievable, to tell you the honest truth. If we would go back 20 years ago, 40 years ago, and someone 50 years ago would have said that WVU would be doing what WVU is doing today, and WVU would have the notoriety that WVU has today, or West Virginia is moving like West Virginia is today, no, nobody would have believed it. You know what they would have believed? They would have believed just nothing except the bad jokes about us and the fact that we're just stuck in the mud. It's different. And what you're doing here, gosh, I couldn't be any more proud of, any more supportive of. I love it beyond belief. Now, they're struggling with trying to figure out what in the world's wrong with my legs. And the bottom part of my legs, I have this neuropathy. It's driving me crazy and everything. And it's only the worst in my big toe of all things. But they're working on it. And Clay told me yesterday, we're on this and everything. And we're going to make your toe feel better. And, I, and I, so I'm celebrating that. But the other thing is just this. Think about... Think about John Doe in West Virginia, how much he needs you, how much he needs the ability to be able to not travel all over the place to try to get decent health care and everything, how much he needs you to be a star. Think about those 22 heart plant transplant patients. Where are they going to go? What are they going to do? Think about the value of saving one life. Think about the incredible amount of work that you do here every single day. I couldn't possibly congratulate you more. It is so easy to follow. One day I'm going to get a bow tie. You know, I've asked Gordon for one many times. He's very stingy. He says, no way. He said, you look like a hippopotamus with a bow tie on. He did. That's what he told me. I mean, he's not nice at times, too. <laughs> but nevertheless, I mean it. How, I, there's no way to be more proud of our state university than I am. There's no way in the world to be blessed any more than be your governor and to see what's happening right now in West Virginia. Nobody, nobody can say we're not moving. Nobody can say WVU is not on the landscape in a gigantic way and their footprint is for real. So all I can do is congratulate you and tell you what an honor it is to be here, what an honor it is to see what your great work you're doing and God bless all of you. Thank you. My name is Renee Babwar. Uh, I can't thank Albert Wright and uh, Clay Marsh and Gordon Gee enough for the, the, the pleasure of being here uh, over the last few years. And I am so humbled to be surrounded by the support of the institution, the support of the state, most importantly the support of the tremendous team we've built here. I've, uh, as Albert has, uh, I've had the good fortune of being in a few different institutions, leading institutions in the country. And I'll tell you, the, the team we have here, of uh, physicians, nurses, administration, and my professional colleagues is really second to none. Uh, I can't uh, tell you how proud I am uh, to be associated with these, these folks. And we're on a, on a sacred mission, as the governor had outlined. We're really here to bring the most advanced cardiovascular care to every citizen of this uh, proud state and beyond. Every day we have patients 
not just from every corner of West Virginia, as far as the Northern Panhandle, the Eastern Panhandle, Parkersburg, Huntington, Charleston, Beckley, every day they come, but they also come from outside of our state. They're coming from Southern Pennsylvania, they're coming from, we have a patient coming from Indiana, we've got a patient coming from um, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, believe it or not. Um, and we have physicians actually coming from different countries and different areas of the country to learn some of the advanced techniques that we've brought here to uh, WVU and to the West Virginia University Heart and Vascular Institute. One of the advances we've made is in the area of advanced heart failure. So when patients really don't have much in the way of other options for their heart, uh, really, unfortunately, many people just die. But in our state, we have a tremendous need in heart failure. And if we can't repair their hearts or treat it with medicines, sometimes these patients have had, never had another option. A year ago, we started the, the state's first advanced heart failure program and implemented two major technologies. One is a technology called extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. And that is a fancy term for basically being able to support the heart and lungs through tubes in the groins and take over the work with a heart pump that can support their oxygenation and heart function. Also about a year ago, we started, as you may recall, the first artificial heart program for this state. I'm proud to tell you that they, this program is going strong and we've had superb outcomes for both of these areas. In fact, we've been nationally recognized and accredited and with an award being noted for one of our programs. Part of that requires a tremendous team that's not just one physician or two physicians. We have an outstanding team of physicians, but also nurses, pharmacists, dietitians, and social work. All of that together, we meet every week to discuss all these hard patients and how we best treat them. So the next phase of care, there is a natural and logical transition as the governor and Albert and, and, and uh, Dr. Gee have outlined, that we have right now 22 patients, but there are far more that are in need of therapy. One thing that wasn't mentioned, that these 22 patients, they have to be four hours away from an advanced heart transplant center to be listed. Imagine what that is to the families and to the patients to uproot themselves and be within a four hour window. Can you imagine a, a patient from Beckley being on a heart transplant list and having to move their family uh, to a transplant center? We don't need to do that anymore. With what we're doing now, the natural transition occurs. It's a team sport, it's a team uh, effort, and I, I want to recognize, and they'll stand as I call their names, uh, the current uh, Associate Vice President for Transplantation for the Health System, uh, Mike Shulo. Um, uh, the medical director of the Advanced Heart Failure Program, George Sokos, and the surgical director for the Advanced Heart Pro Program, uh, Dr. Mohamed Salman. Uh, these three individuals, amongst many others, that form our Advanced Heart Failure team. Uh, transplantation had its beginnings 50 years ago. It's now standard of care for many patients that have select needs. And uh, many of us already have that experience and we want to bring it here. So we'll follow the, the lead of Dr. Gee, Dr. Marsh, Albert Wright, and especially the vision of uh, Governor Justice to be able to bring that service here to West Virginia. We look forward to getting started, uh, and uh, we look forward to serving the state along this really sacred mission. We can't be more humbled and proud to be here. Governor Justice for your support for coming today. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we will take some questions from the media privately after uh, we finish here, but we have a nice reception in the lobby next to us and I'll ask everyone to join us. Thank you so much for being here and have a great evening everyone.